Hello and welcome to the next chapter in this ongoing series of tutorials that will help familiarize you and improve your skills in Corel Paint Shop Photo Pro X3. This is Robert Corel. In today's short lesson I'm going to show you the basics of how to create custom sharpening levels in Paint Shop Photo Pro. In this video I'm going to start on the desktop launching Corel Paint Shop Photo Pro X3, go into the organizer, select folder that I have which is called working that I've put into this watch list and then go into custom sharpness which contains an image that I want to work with in this video. Selecting full editor opens the full editor where I can then work with this photo and edit it and retouch it the way I want to. It's a picture of my son Ben climbing around a tree at the zoo. It's a really nice picture. I really like this. You've got a nice color contrast between his clothes and the tree and you've got the nice green foliage but it's really not very sharp on him. You can see his face is just a little bit soft. Now there are a lot of ways to sharpen uh, an image and uh, some are sledgehammer techniques and some are a little more finely tuned. Let's look at sledgehammer first. Let's look at um, high pass sharpen uh, increase the radius, strength is already up there, uh, change that to hard light so you can see that accentuates the contrast there between the shadows and you know the subject and you can increase the radius even more so that it really over sharpens which the, the only problem there is, you see that is sharper it, but it accentuates the noise level here in the pixel so if I undo that and redo it. See all that noise pop up in the shadows or in where his eyebrows are? So you always want to balance your goals of sharpening versus introducing noise or other artifacts in the picture. You can choose other techniques to sharpen. Just plain old sharpen. That works too. In this case it doesn't really do that much. You can also look at Smart Photo Fix which actually does also sharpen and here we can see what uh, the program wants to do. It wants to brighten the image overall but reduce the intensity of the shadows uh, and then sharpen it at that level. And you can see the color balance options improve the contrast a little bit. Um, none of those are bad in and of themselves but you don't always uh, want to use every technique on every image. In this case what I want to do is show selective sharpening techniques for different areas of this photo. I'm going to duplicate this background layer, name the first layer Ben. I'm going to do it again and name that one just probably background. And I'm going to turn that background layer off just to tell myself I don't want to work with that right now. There's really no other practical reason. Selecting my Ben layer, what I want to do is zoom in a little bit here so I can see the results and I'm going to choose adjust sharpness unsharp mask and really just try to optimize his face. I'm going to leave luminance only checked clipping is at 10 is okay and I'm going to work with either radius and strength to control the effect of this sharpening. Now radius if you increase that quite a bit it's going to really enhance you know in some cases like this over the top sharpening and then that you can back down the strength now to see if that reduces it makes it make it look better or you can you know reduce the radius and increase the strength and see how that does my general technique is to work with lower radii one even or less and then use the strength to get the amount of sharpness I want problem is always noise. If you look closely at his face right now, I am sharpening it with these settings, but I'm also really enhancing the noise. So I want to take a look at that and find the right balance. Let me lower the radius even further, reduce the strength, see if I can find a good spot. I think that works pretty well. I'm going to press OK to lock those changes and that is 
Ben. Okay, that's I wanted to optimize that for him. So now what I will do is simply select him roughly here with my lasso. Come up and create a mask layer to show that selection. Select none now. Make sure my mask layer is still selected, like the eraser. Make sure black is in the background property. And now I can turn off this background here to even clarify what I'm doing. Just erase in this mask area to blend him in or isolate him from the rest of the photo. So what this does is the sharpening that I applied to him is going to achieve the effect but not alter the tree in any way because I'm masking that out of his layer. What I will do after this is go into the background layer, change the sharpness of the trees, or you don't even have to, it doesn't have to be a sharpening effect, it could be anything. I could do an artistic effect, I could create a texture, I could turn it black and white, I could do any number of things, uh, but in this case, at least my initial thought is you might want to apply different levels of sharpening to different parts of the image. I'm just really doing this roughly right now. <laughs> You'd spend a lot more time doing this mask better. Uh, if you're working on this image, uh, not in a video. All right, so that's pretty good for our purposes. Turn the uh, ultimate, the final background back on, and you can see here, seamless image. He has been sharpened. The background has been masked out, so it is unaffected. So now if I turn this other background layer back on, zoom back out, now I can start playing around. What I can do here is if I want more sharpness, let's say on the trees, I can increase those to make them pop out more, whereas he's not affected. I'm just going to over -ex exaggerate things here so you can see the effect. He's not affected in any way. Still looks good there. Now I can turn his layer or layer group here off so you can see the effect of, of that on him, which is not very good, and then turn it back on. All right. Now you could conceivably do this for any number of things. If Let's say I wanted this instead just to be background do foliage and then duplicate another layer and call that bark. So um, what I would do with the foliage layer is then basically mask out. And you can do it by masking or even just erasing. I'm going to use the eraser here and just erase areas of the bark, let's say, that I don't want to keep at this level of sharpness. Just quickly erasing those out. Masking gives you more flexibility in terms of changing the mask points where uh, what areas of the of this layer you want to keep in or erase. You can actually change your mind later. So I, I encourage you to think masks instead of the eraser. But sometimes the eraser is is a fast way to uh, approach these things. I'm not going to continue with this too much here. So then I've essentially erased most of the tree bark here, or yeah, most of the tree bark, and then I can turn on the bark layer here, uh, which is a duplicate of the original background. And let's say I want something here that's black and white, just output channel gray, monochrome is checked, press that OK on that, and then I've created a black and white tree bark within a greatly exaggerated foliage, sharpened, and then a, a sharpened in a more reasonable way subject. So I can continue to work on either erasing or masking out areas of each layer that I want to blend together to produce my final image effect. All right, masks are really a powerful way to control different elements of the image and how they contribute to the final effect. And I hope in this way you've seen that you can 
creates different sharpening effects in different areas of the image that work you know, and give you a greater, a better image in the end than if you just applied the one size fits all sharpening to the entire image.